South America, 10 million years ago. A continent that has been separated from the rest of the world since the Cretaceous period, allowing countless unique species to flourish across its vast biomes. Everything from terror birds to ground sloths roam the land, and in the vast freshwater biomes there are some animals that are very similar to their modern relatives, such as capybara ancestors, though these can weigh over half a ton. There are also river dolphins, just like today. They have limited vision, and so make use of highly evolved echolocation to see in their often murky surroundings. A small pod of river dolphins is swimming through the wide rivers, tracking schools of fish to hunt, while sending out clicks to stay in communication with each other. The pod member in the lead slows down and the others do the same as he clearly detected something. The lead's clicks get more erratic and eventually he turns, sending out a long whistle for the group to move back the way they came. Most of the pod follows but one young female lingers for a bit, using her own echolocation to find whatever the lead had found. It didn't take long, her senses picked up something on the bottom of the river, something long scaly, and large beyond belief. For a second she froze, unable to process what it was, or what it was doing. The one thing that every sense was telling her was that it was a huge threat. The creature laying on the riverbed slowly opened its jaws, revealing massive serrated teeth. Its gape was so wide, it was as if the river itself had opened a maw with the intent of consuming everything within it. The young dolphin darted away in terror, her instincts rightly pushing her to flee and rejoin her group. Above the murky water there was no indication that a monstrous predator lay in wait. None at all. But as the young mammal had just learned, there was indeed a terrifying carnivore laying at the bottom of the river, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The creature that haunted these waterways was an adult male, Purosaurus, one of the largest crocodilians to have ever lived. Females can grow up to 6 meters in length, but the males, like the one biding its time at the bottom of the river, can grow over 9 meters long and weigh 6 tons. Their closest living relatives are caimans though the largest of them only get to about 450 kilograms. The huge male calmly pushes himself upwards, and using his mighty tail, casually swims downriver. The dolphins were never his target, but the tiny sensory organs on his jaws are picking up vibrations of suitable prey. Staying below the surface, the Purosaurus steadily moves up the river in hopes of obtaining a meal. Soon enough he comes to the source of the disturbance. A group of the enormous rodents, Joseph and Tasia, have fled into the river, running from another croc species, though this one is a Sebeckid, a purely terrestrial family with long, powerful legs. This one charged the rodents while they were foraging near the shore, and the flock are now swimming across the river as fast as they can to escape the threat on land only to enter the domain of a far worse predator. The Sebeckid ran into the river till the water was up to his shoulders, but didn't pursue any further, knowing the hunt was over. The Joseph and the Asia were good swimmers, and some had made it to the opposite bank, but there were over 40 of them, and on said bank, they were beginning to crowd. At the back of the group, the water burst, and out of it, a great pair of jaws erupted forward, slamming down on the back of one of the herbivores. The Purosaurus had revealed himself, and as he burst forward grabbing his prey, his skull knocked back several of the Joseph Antasia, and sent a small wave that crash over a dozen more. The rest of the herd scattered with a new wave of terror as the monster came and pulled back into the water, dragging the screaming rodent to a watery grave. When he reached water deep enough to fully submerge, the Purosaurus looked for a suitable submerged log. He then wedged his prey's corpse beneath the log so it would be secure. Then he grabbed a part of the body and death rolled, tearing a large helping of flesh and bone off, which he swallowed eagerly. 
He continued until there was merely a few scraps of flesh and fur floating in the water. That freshwater fish eagerly tore into. Now satisfied, the male hauled himself onto the sandy riverbank and bathed in the sun. He wouldn't have to eat again for months. Far away on the shores of the ocean, a group of Perosaurus have gathered for the meal of a lifetime. On a sandy beach, the ocean had delivered the body of a creature that dwarfs even the mighty crocodilians. This coastline is the final resting place of a megalodon, the largest shark to have ever lived. Its immense 60-ton body attracts countless seabirds that swarm the carcass. Eagerly, they pick at the top of the once mighty apex predator. Now the truly giant scavengers have arrived, and there is no need to fight when there is more flesh here than they could eat a dozen times over. The Megalodon's body dwarfs even the Purosaurus as they bite and roll, ripping off section of hide, eating their fill before moving up the beach to lounge in the sun, or retreat to the water to cool off. Over the coming months, many different species will flock to this beach to feed on the dead shark, until a strong enough tide will arrive to pull whatever remains back into the ocean. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a contender for the largest crocodilian to have ever lived, Purosaurus. Purosaurus's remains have been found in multiple countries across South America, from Brazil to Venezuela. Though all of the remains are fragmentary, so piecing the animal together has been quite the puzzle. The very first remains were discovered in 1892 and consisted of a skull. In fact, almost all Purosaurus fossils are just pieces of the skull. It lived during the Miocene between 16 and 5 million years ago. Purosaurus was a crocodilian in the Cayman family, with it being closely related to the six extant Cayman species that still live in Central and South America. Purosaurus itself had three species, those being Brasiliensis, Nivensis, and Mirandi. So, how large was it? Since we only have skull material, it is difficult to calculate the size of the animal. But, as it only died out recently, and has many close relatives, modern caimans have been used to scale Purosaurus, using the largest skull specimen that measures 1.45 meters in length. Over the years, the estimates have varied widely, with length being from 7 to 15.8 meters, and weight going from 5.5 .5 to 12.5 tons. A study in 2022 estimated body length to be between 7.6 and 9.2 meters, and a weight between 2 and 6.2 tons. Using a phylogenetic approach, a slightly higher but less broad estimate came up, with a length between 9.2 and 10 meters, and a weight between 4 and 5 tons. These estimates put Purosaurus as possibly the largest crocodilian to have ever lived, and definitely the largest that lived during the Cenozoic. It is very close to the other two largest crocs, those being Dinosuchus from North America and Sarcosuchus from Africa, both of which lived during the Cretaceous, and both of which come very close to Purosaurus in both length and weight. Unfortunately, all three are known from pretty scant remains, so it is quite difficult to definitively give a top spot to any of them. Of course, new research comes out all the time, but what you can usually count on is that these three will swap a lot. Taking a closer look at the skull, we can see it isn't long and narrow like a crocodile's, but broad and squarish, often being called box-shaped. The skull is extremely robust, with thick bone and muscle attachment points that attach the jaws to the neck these indicate that Purosaurus's neck was packed with large, powerful muscles, used not just to hold the skull around, but deliver crushing bites. Estimates on just how strong its bite force could be came at between 52,000 newtons and a whopping 69,000 newtons, almost 7 tons of force. 
For comparison, the strongest bite force of any terrestrial animal belongs to Tyrannosaurus rex, which has an estimated bite force between 34,000 and 63,000 newtons. Calling these jaws bone-shattering doesn't even do them justice. To aid this bite force, the jaws were lined with large teeth. These do vary in size between the three species, but are around 50 millimeters long, with a slight backward curve. Both edges were serrated for slicing through flesh. What's most interesting about its teeth is that they are slightly flattened at the top, and more conical than, say, theropod teeth. This is an adaptation to deal with the force of the animal's bite force, making the teeth more sturdy, so that when they cut into bone, they were less likely to break or bend. You'll also notice the large nasal opening near the front of the jaws. This space is structured in such a way to safely dissipate the immense forces of the jaws closing, so it didn't break its own skull from consistent biting. With such a powerful weapon at its disposal, what was Purosaurus hunting? Now it's easy to say just about anything, as it was by far the largest carnivore in its ecosystem, but Purosaurus may have mostly gone after large animals. You see, there were many other crocodilians living in the water, alongside Purosaurus, some of which got to respectable sizes themselves, but many of them seem adapted to specific niches, such as a generalist crocodile or a fish specialist gharial. Purosaurus, while being a top order carnivore, may have mostly preyed on large bodied animals, using ambush to surprise and quickly kill or cripple prey. Looking again at the skull, we can see, just like modern crocs, the eyes, ears, and nostrils sit at the top of the skull, allowing Purosaurus to have all sensory organs out of the water while hiding the rest of its body just beneath the surface. There was certainly no shortage of prey, as many different animal groups have been found to have lived in the same area as Purosaurus, from primates, water birds, both flightless and not, ground sloths, ancestors of the capybara that weighed half a ton, terrestrial crocs, freshwater dolphins, sharks, countless fish, and many large notoungulate mammals that only lived in South America, all of which became extinct. There were also very large turtles that got to the size of a small car. These may have been a primary food source for Purosaurus. As once grabbed, the turtle's normally solid defense would do little against a near 7-ton bite force. Of course, Purosaurus could have taken down large terrestrial animals that ventured into the water, or struck anything drinking from the water's edge. Acting similar to Nile crocodiles or saltwater crocodiles, being built to catch and pull large mammals to the water and drown them. On another note, a study done using a biomechanical model of Purosaurus's skull showed that it was capable of performing the death roll that many modern crocodilian species do to dismember prey or pull apart large meals. So how did this giant disappear? After all, the genus survived for around 10 million years. Well, for a long time, Purosaurus flourished in the large lakes, rivers, and wetlands it called home, but its environment would be changed drastically with the gradual formation of the Andes mountain ranges. As the world around them changed from the upheaval of this area, the complex food webs that keep environments stable were affected, and at the top of it all was Purosaurus. In the end, its giant size was its downfall, as large animals need more resources and space to live, and they weren't able to adapt quickly enough to a different environment. Many other species also went extinct as well, showing it wasn't just the large groups that couldn't adapt, though new biomes would emerge to be dominated by different creatures. So, Purosaurus, one of the most ferocious and successful crocodiles to have ever lived, one that survived till surprisingly recently, a creature that shows that even if you're the size of a bus, you can still be stealthy. One that is survived by the modern caimans, and other families of crocodilians. But what do you think of Purosaurus? And for my question of the week, of the three largest crocs, Purosaurus, Dinosuchus, and Sarcosuchus, which is your favourite, and why? What lesser known extinct reptile would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.